And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Mardu Nights in Historic. That's right, we're finishing up our best of one day Monday stream with a Historic League where we're going to be playing Mardu Nights here, kind of just combining all of the best nights together in one deck. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing here. So we're we're using the the way that we get to do this with having um, with needing, you know, like black mana, red mana, white mana right away, playing triple white with Benelish Marshall is we're taking full advantage of tournament grounds, being able to add red, white, or black for knights or equipments, and unclaimed territory, where we choose our creature type, we'll choose knight, and then we can tap it and add one mana of any color to be able to cast the, the creature spells of that chosen type. So we're taking full advantage of our of eight tri-lands um, here. And then, of course, we have our uh, 12... Or no, we have eight shocks, also eight shocks, and then some some other dual lands. That's right, we're not playing the Blood Crypts because of Benelish Marshall. So all 20 of our lands, or 21, 21, all 21 of our lands cast Benelish Marshall. And, um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's basically why we're going with this, because we want all of our lands to cast Benelish Marshall. But they can also cast these other things. So we're not going, because we're going with these Try lands with tournament grounds, unclaimed territory. We're not playing History of Benalia, which of course is an awesome, awesome night card, because we're we're we have to kind of make some some uh, mana. Um, we have to kind of make some uh, adjustments to be able to to play uh, the black in here also with Knight of the Ebon Legion, Stormfist Crusader, and stuff like that. The reason why we're not so we're not playing Knight of the Ebon, or gosh, sorry, we're not playing History of Benalia. Because we only have um, thirteen lands that would cast it, so we'd have to have two of the thir two of these thirteen lands, because these eight lands don't don't uh, add white mana for history of Benalia, and so that's why we're not going to history of Benalia. Same kind of thing with with um, Embercleave. As far as having double red for Embercleave, tournament grounds counts, but then we only have ten lands because tournament grounds, and there's only these other ten red sources. We could, of course, have one isolated chapel be a clifftop retreat, um, so that could be an eleventh red source. But that's still not really enough, so we're not playing Ember Cleave either. So we're basically making it so that we have just a lot of cards that we can reliably cast. Uh, of course, Conclave Tribunal, we can tap a white creature for that, um, and same with like Benare Luxon because these are the convoke spells there. We don't really have too much interaction. We're just playing, of course, the two Conclave Tribunals. We're just going to try to go wide with Worthy Knight and these other knights and just have a lot of... <clears throat> um, and it, like Venerate Luxon, just make large creatures really fast and try to beat down. So decks that have good cheap interaction and, and are killing our creatures very efficiently, that's going to be a problem for us. And sometimes Sweepers can be a problem too. But we do have ways to redraw with Stormfist Crusader, letting us draw more cards, Acclaim Contender, letting us draw more cards. But hopefully with having eight Anthem effects with Inspiring Vent Veteran and Benelish Marshall, plus having Venerate Luxodon, so eight Anthem effects plus Venerate Luxodons, hopefully we can just end games quickly. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, Midnight, yeah, could, could play Midnight Reaper. I chose Acclaimed Contender instead because um, basically I thought like, like Mono Red would already be kind of tough for us, but... I'm basically just going with Acclaimed Contender instead of Midnight Reaper, but Midnight Reaper is also an option. If you're playing against a removal-heavy deck, you'd rather have Midnight Reaper, but if you're playing against other creature decks where that life, where you're trying to race and the life, life, the life loss matters more, we'd rather have the Acclaimed Contender. And so I'm going with the Contender. So no, but I, Yeah, I just talked about... Um, yeah, that's I just talked about... Yeah, no, Benalia. So yeah just don't have enough white sources because these don't cast history banalia that's why we're not playing it okay so we're going to try some uh let's see i guess we have to just to do the play mode for historic and we're going to be playing seven games over here try to clean it up you know like we we definitely just struggled a lot with is it drakes that we just got done playing this should be our last league. Uh, for those of y'all watching later on, you know, tomorrow I'm not going to be streaming. I'm going to be taking the day off to build a new computer. Should hopefully be the last league with this computer. Really hope. Um, 
Really hope the new computer works and everything. Man, I sure hope so. Yeah, Midnight Reaper could be a def could definitely be a sideboard card against like control decks that are playing tons of sweepers. No, Noctis Grasp. All right, we don't need any more. Don't need any more land. How am I supposed to know which ones have already been targeted? I really hope this does this right and they didn't move around. Are you kidding me? Why do they move around? I chose the one on the left, the one on the right, the one in the middle. It shouldn't be that, that hard to do that with the three of them, but it... Unfortunately, it is that hard to do that. I guess I could have played around the instant speed removal better by just by just putting the getting the fervent champions like that. That was really frustrating. I just got to eat a creature for free and, and not take three damage. That's... Like, I think... Because they just gained two life this last turn. I think we probably would have killed our opponent if they would have taken that extra damage and we had the extra creature. That's a great draw. Uh, I don't think they, they realize what this double strike was. They can't, they could not make that block. Like, they had to block with the Dread Presence also. Right? Right? I thought... No, maybe not.
I guess I I guess I looked at that wrong. I guess they could make that block. No, I haven't tried any Mardu Angels in Historic right now. I, I haven't yet. Uh, we're just getting it, hitting the crossfire of all the green decks. Well... Looks like this is over now with them having the 2-3 the lifelinker, but we definitely lost this because of not having any way to tell with three Fervent Champions of, of what to target. That's definitely the only reason why we lost this game. Warrior Queen Necromancer has a nice ring What a good mindless minion. Nothing's working today. <laughs> the computer doesn't work. Arena doesn't work. Because you really can't tell which ones you choose. There's there's nothing... If you attack with three Fervent Champions, there's... As far as I can tell, there's no... Obviously, we need to make all three of them three twos, but there's no way to know how to do that as far as I can tell. No, it... Like they they split up the three the three of them, but it you can't really tell which because they also move them around. They make it much more difficult than it needs to be. Yeah, there we go. The music's working. Yeah, the the two most popular decks are are um, Gruul and Oko. So. Yeah, main deck Noxious Grass definitely makes a lot of sense in this format. All right, so we're going to have to go wide Cauldron Familiar. We can't really go through Cauldron Familiar. Obviously, do not want to see Oko next turn, obviously. That's no, not Oko. Still a very good anti-aggro card, though. Yeah, there's there's no real sign right now of his, of anything being banned in Historic. I wouldn't expect anything to be banned in Historic for a while, but I'd have to say that the yeah, Oko, Veil of Summer, Once Upon a Time, those things are certainly in the they're certainly at like the top of the list. That's pretty awesome. Journey to Eternity with Cauldron Familiar. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty awesome.
this is kind of us just dying to these Stormfist Crusaders right now. Their deck is definitely designed at playing defense. As you can tell, that they, they play some really good defense over here. Don't really know what we're going to do to get through these yet. We're going to need more, more lords. Could use like another worthy knight to be able to keep going. Keep going more wide. Um... Invite you to change your ways. That card's good. The double strike was gonna be pretty important with the Knight of the Ebon Legion the next turn of activating Knight of the Ebon Legion to make it double strike death touch. There we go. Here we go. I don't know if I don't know if this is lethal or not. It's probably not. Well, let's go. Wilderness Reclamation. That's pretty broken. I maybe I guess I should have pumped up the Stormfist Crusaders because they have menace. Yeah, I should I should have pumped up the Stormfist Crusaders. So this is twelve. 12 plus 14, this is 26 damage unblocked. So this is 26 unblocked damage. So they're at 12. I think that means this is going to be lethal. They get to gain life. So they, they're basically at 16 because of this thing. This makes it 17. Got there. Negative seven. Good job, Worthy Knight. Making these extra 14 power worth of creatures over here. We definitely need that with them going down to negative seven. And, of course, the... Um, the Stormfist Crusader... Helping us dig far enough to look for more lords. So yeah, that was that was pretty close for how much power we were attacking with there. Jump 
champion. Oh no. Uh, this is gonna get messy. Gosh, this is gonna get messy. Oh, no. Uh, uh, I don't know, GG. Yeah, talk about the, just the absolute perfect one drop and two drop against my opening hand. Soul Warden into a Johnny's Pride. Like, just Soul Warden and then a Johnny's Pride mate. That was pretty perfect. <laughs> yeah, but we, we were pretty dead. So they have two removal spells, I'm dead. So yeah, they don't or if they have yeah, if they have a way to give them trample. We got there. They didn't have quite good enough other defense. Their their turn one, turn two is awesome, but they didn't have like another one drop to pair with the Pride Mate. And then they really shouldn't have been attacking. They should have just been blocking. Like if they just if they just didn't attack, I don't like know how like they like they just kind of yeah like they just kind of misevaluated what their role was. Their role like they didn't need to end that game quickly. The Soul Warden was just going to take over. They just they just needed to stay alive with Soul Warden and everything. So they just sit back on defense. You know like they get to block one of my four power things the first turn and kill it. Um, and you know like so they could have been at ten not at six, and so on. Hmm. 
Hmm. It's better to lead with Knight of the Ebon Legion, but I only have one red source. I can't double spell with these fervent champions. Obviously, if they just play like a, a sweeper, I'm dead. I'm not really playing around sweepers with this deck. I guess I could. I'm certain you're quite charmed to meet me. One bite, and all your cares are gone. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. This kills Oko. I kind of I tapped the wrong land there. I meant to do fervent night night. Oh well. All right. So is there any way to? Uh... I guess no matter what, these are going to be attacking for six. So, like, we'll just send those over at Oko, and we'll send this here. So, I say I want it to be the left one. Then this one needs to do the right one, because the right one already triggered. And then this one does the middle one. What? Ha! Huh? I thought for sure I did it right that time. How does it work? Hey, Narinen. <laughs> Darn said message giving me stress about trying to be witty once a month. <laughs> that's great. Thanks, Narinen. Oh, that's Storm Count 22. You have to do middle, left, right, not left, right, middle. So we do middle, and then... No, because didn't, didn't the right one already trigger? Oh, because I can check. So the right one already did the trigger, so we have to do the right one now. Oh, wait, the, it's the right one's trigger right now? So what was the other one that the middle one already did? So now we're, I'm going to choose middle. And then this thing moved over to the left. Gosh, what is going on? No. Why, why would you auto tap like that? I don't want to play Knight of the Ebon Legion anyway, but. Yeah, they change places after the triggers. It's, yeah, it's so confusing. I, I really did not want to play the Knight of the Ebon Legion. I, I wasn't going to play it because my opponent needed a sweeper to stay alive, but still that auto tap didn't make any sense. So you're saying it's it's middle left right? For somebody that's just been playing Magic Online and now Arena, 
just a ton over the last nine years. You'd think they would make it just a little bit easier. It's not like it's not like I'm new to this. Still so difficult. They definitely change positions. So if they didn't change positions, I, you know, I did, you know, like the, the one on the the. I don't, I don't remember what order, I, whatever order I did it in. I, I've targeted all three, you know, like the left, middle, and right. Multiple times. So they, they certainly are changing positions. Because otherwise that would work. But I don't, I don't see how you could say they don't change positions. So I've done I've done left right middle and then I think last time I did what middle right left the second time Th this last time I just I just, this last time I may not have I think like this last time I didn't choose all three different ones Usually better to have bodyguard protect these other things, but obviously we're just going to try to curve out. We'd really like to draw any of our eight. We'd like to draw any of our eight um, tri lands. That'd be nice. All right. So basically, the reason to block here, my creature in play is is definitely valuable because we have venerated Luxodon. We have um, knight. We have Kinsbale Cavalier. So we definitely have reasons to want to keep this creature in play. But how they were just like mountain and then just attack, I don't know. It kind of just felt like light up the stage. And so I I traded and, and plus we want to keep our life total high, you know, so I did trade, but now seeing that they're gruel, I regret doing that. Yeah, I'm not sure why the creatures change positions, yeah, like in the combat phase and stuff too. 
like that. I, I don't I don't understand why they do either. So I have a good amount of cards in hand. My opponent's been missing land drops. I don't I don't honestly want to give them I don't want to give them more cards with Crusader. Like I like our chances with these cards here. I don't want to give them more cards. And plus we have a little bit of a lower life total. This thing's a goblin, right? Yes, they're just playing goblins. JRC! 11 months! Thank you so much for that resub, JRC. I'd have to, you know, get rid of all of these blockers to play Luxodon. It's the worst. They attack out. I block this thing. They do two, four, six to me. It's probably fine. I'll just auto pay. Goblin Matron. I think that's how you pronounce that, right? Matron. Matron. Yeah, I, mean, I know it's it's Goblin Matron, but I think of other fun ways to say it. All right, so I would like to play Kins, King, Kinsbale Cavalier here. Um, oh. Is this like a little billy goat? Like a little goat? I don't know. Like, how are these legs? How are those legs this far out on this thing? Those legs are crazy. Anyway, okay. Anyway, the problem with playing this is the the crater maker does two damage to a creature, so I can't really play it because of the crater maker. And so we're going Belish Marshall instead. Okay, we're three and two now. I'm gonna play two more.
Knights v. Goblins. Okay, we can keep this. On the draw. What's the deal with that? I like its dance here. After it breathes the fire, that dance is the best. Okay, right here. That's my favorite. I hope they don't have Cry the Carnarium. They can have Ritual of Soot or Flame Sweep. Bodyguard will save a Crusader. If that's the case. Then I'm planning on using the Tribunal next turn to get rid of this Fires, especially with this mana with not having very much black mana. Alright, so that is not the Crusader that we can save. They have to have Cry of the Carnarium, otherwise they have another sweep where we get to just save these. And of course, Cry of the Carnarium doesn't even kill the Knight of the Ebon Legion anymore. The bodyguard looking really good this this match. I don't get to activate Knight of the Oven Legion now. Maybe maybe discarding that chapel was the wrong move. All right, they got double black. Wait, I guess they had double black last turn. I guess they just played the steam vents. I think they, yeah, because it was a water grave. They didn't want to shock in with it. What if they play Fires of Invention into...
Urza's Ruinous Blast. And then just exile everything on my side. Four and two. Yeah, main deck Urza's Ruinous Blast and Grixis. They can only cast it off the fires of invention that also gets exiled. But it would have been perfect here because the Conclave Tribunal would get exiled and give them a new fires. That would have been a heck of a turn, though. Fires into Ruinous Blast. GG's. Yeah, we're... Yeah, go wide one... Yeah, best of one day Monday, go wide. Yeah, we were, we were going wide with the Selesnya Knights. It's basically just Worthy Knight going uh, wide. See, like, maybe I should just wait till turn three. Like, lead with Worthy Knight, and then go Crusader plus Bodyguard to protect. I mean, I miss four points of damage by waiting till turn three. Since they're a, if they were a deck that's not playing sweepers, you know, if they're playing like, you know, like some green deck that, that they're not playing sweepers, I would have played Worthy Knight here. But since they're playing sweepers, I'll play the Stormfist Crusader and not extend another, another valuable go wide target. That's the power of the eight, the eight Tri-Lands, though. They come to play untapped. They don't do you any damage, and you can just easily cast these knights and uh, not have to worry about it at all. So that's the, the power of those eight Tri-Lands. Um... So there we go. That's Marty Knights. You know, you're you're going to run into some problems whenever your opponent plays some sweepers. You know, like the Field of the Dead, you know, sweeper into then just playing a, a bunch of 2-2s. That's kind of a problem. And you know, if they have real good cheap removal, like I think Mono Red, for example, would be a problem also. But just some great synergy. Pretty easy to play. Put your head down. Um... Get a bunch of knights. If you don't got the K Kinsbale Cavalier, you don't want to use a rare on it, that's okay. I don't think you necessarily need to. I think you can play um, Venerated Knight? No, it's Venerated Luxodon. Uh, there's another four mana knight that's just a lord that you could play instead. That I'm not sure. Valiant. I, I thought it started with a V. Valiant Knight. Which you may not have this one either. I wish it, I wish we could play a Johnny. Like this is a perfect a Johnny deck, a Johnny adversary of tyrants. Well, I don't know about perfect. That's this is a very good, very good a Johnny adversary of tyrants. Make our creatures bigger or return, um, you know, return like worthy knight and stormfist cavalier and stuff into play. Yeah, you, you gotta get your your butt off the screen. Hey, what's up, James? <laughs> Thank you so much for that Risa for three months now. So yeah, pretty good show in there for Marty Knights, especially after the Is It Drakes, that's for sure. But yeah, that's a fun historic deck. 
And that's the thing about historic, you know, investing in the historic cards, they're not ever rotating. And so you can just always use them. Um, there's, as far as like a history of Benalia version, I think you need to stick to two colors. So I think you need to either play black, white, or red, white. Of course, red, white gives you the inspiring veteran and fer fervent champion, but that's kind of about it. Black, white, um, you have Knight of the Ebon Legion, then you, there's other good, um, black knights with like black lance paragon and stuff and then you can have you can have like more interaction more removal you can have like a johnny and soren and stuff like that um but as far as playing history of banalia i i think it's kind of too it's too difficult to play three colors with all of these good three color like different colors of knights and play history of banalia as far so mana base wise i think that's too difficult hey no problem james thank you thank you so much all right, but that's it here for Mardu Knights. Um, for so, if you're watching on YouTube, of course, hit that like button over there. Um, leave some comments too. And again, thank you very much for watching through the lag problems. I know it's been rough the last couple of weeks. I won't be streaming tomorrow, but I'll be building a new computer as long as you know, as long as the the computer case comes in. And then I'll be building it tomorrow, and hopefully, hopefully by 3 o'clock Wednesday, it'll all be ready to go, and I'll have a brand new computer, and lag issues will be gone, and life will be so much better. So hopefully, hopefully. But that's it here for Mardu Nights, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.